Um, so I was going to talk about what design is and give some examples, um, try and kind of scope it for you. Also to um, I'll give a couple of examples of bad design, because I don't think you really recognize good unless you look at bad as well. Design has become a fetish, and it's understandable. No other discipline contributes to the positivity of mankind, such as design. A designed object is one whose makers worked long and hard to get it just right. Most of the world has sadly not been well designed. On the surface it might seem like design is about putting a coat of paint on things and making it look good, but really that's not the case. Design is about problem solving and it's about creating experiences and it's really more about the way things work rather than how they look. It's easy to forget just how large and diverse the design disciplines are. Design ranges from communication design to architecture, urban planning, fashion and product design, systems and service design to heavy industrial machinery. Sometimes great design is so good, it's invisible. In 1931, Harry Beck realized the London tube map was very difficult to understand. By ignoring the actual distances and thinking of what would make it easier for the end user, Harry Beck became a hero to millions of urban commuters. Design is knowing what questions to ask and how to ask them. What's the right problem to solve? How do I solve it? Why should I solve it? In a world in which anyone can now build anything, design is understanding whether something is worth building at all. What is design? I think a better question to ask is, what isn't design? Design is a lot more than just making physical products. I think in order to define what design is, you have to consider five main aspects. Okay, so that's it. Uh, this is fake. People used to say, no, Norman's okay, but if you followed what he said, everything would be usable, but it would be ugly. The new me is all about making things kind of neat and fun. And so this is a Philippe Stark juicer produced by Alessi. It's so much fun, I have it in my house, but I have it in the entryway. I don't use it to make juice. <laughs> I'd like to talk a little bit this morning about what happens if we move from design to design thinking. Now, I'm a fairly slow learner, but eventually it occurred to me that uh, maybe what passed for design wasn't all that important. Making things more attractive, making them a bit easier to use, making them more marketable. By focusing on a design, maybe just a single product, I was being incremental and uh, not having much of an impact. But I think this small view of design is a relatively recent phenomena, and in fact really emerged in the latter half of the 20th century as design became a tool of consumerism. Design is it's something that most people take for granted. It's not something that you see and you think it's cool and you call it design. It's not being a hipster. It's not being fashionable. Because design is a way of thinking. And it took me four years to figure that out. Now, design thinking begins with what Roger Martin, the business school professor at the University of Toronto, calls integrative thinking. And that's the ability to exploit opposing ideas and opposing constraints to create new solutions. In the case of design, that means balancing desirability, what humans need, with technical feasibility and economic viability. 